you all hungry and so I just decided to add some slides. <laughs> no, um, in the next couple of minutes, um, I don't you really want to see red as well as my microbe. So in the next couple of minutes, um, we will check out why my microbe see red when a synthetic phenacine holds the key to enhanced biogas production. So biogas production has came or came into the focus um, over the last couple of years. That's the um, slide. Um, all over the world, biogas is um, biological produced combustible gas, um, and it primarily contains methane. Um, why do we care about it? Um, we care about it because um, we have increased um, energy demands with an increasing population worldwide. Um, biogas can reduce greenhouse gases um, since um, the emission of CO2 using or combusting biogas is half that big as um, you burn fossils. Um, new technologies also make it actually possible that um, you can combust biogas um, without any CO2 emissions. Um, also, you avoid other environmental impacts like um, if you burn fossils, you will have ash particles um, that are polluting, polluting the air. And um, we can use biogas for the um, production of electricity and use it as fuels for our cars. Um, so who is making that biogas? Um, the biogas um, is produced by microbes, by bacteria and archaea. And the bacteria, they are really in favor. They really like renewable and non-renewable -renew energy sources. So uh, renewable ones would be food waste, uh, non-renewable ones would be coal. They are eating that to take up electrons, like we eat ice cream and chocolate to take up electrons. And um, they transfer the electrons along a really complicated net that's really simplified, along to the methanogenic archaea. And the methanogenic archaea are actually the microbes that produce the methane at the end. And we are getting out our clean energy of that. Um, where do we get our samples from and how did we came to um, enhance biogas production? So we have a field site in Lithgow, the Lithgow State Coal Mine site, where the big state mine fire started. It actually didn't start there. But um, we have five drilled wells in the coal seam. Those wells are 80 meters long with a 20 meter wa water column. Um, the walls are covered by coal, so we can get our coal samples out of those wells from the coal seam, and we get our renewable energy sources like food waste from Earth Power. It's located in the west of Sydney, and it takes up all the food from restaurants and um, supermarkets in the local area of Sydney. And actually, some of the food is quite good to eat still. Um, <laughs> maybe our lunch will be better, I don't know. <laughs> So engineering focus in the past and also we did actually have taken out to enhance biogas production via playing around with factors like the system, the system, system design, like breed treatments, like temperature, adding nutrients or changing the pH. But um, nobody really um, thought about it and there's a lack of understanding. Um, can we actually manipulate the electron flow to get microbial communities to produce more methane that we can use for our electricity. Um, so what we were thinking of is, or what came along is, was a synthetic phenacine. Um, this synthetic phenacine is a nitrogen containing um, heterocyclic aromatic compound. And it was described, um, or has been described, that it can take up electrons, but it also can donate electrons. So it's an electron mediator, or like a magic molecule that can do both. So we were thinking of um, adding this to our coal cultures, to our food-based um, cultures, and shortcut the whole electron flow until the electrons are actually going to the methanogenic archaea. We wanted to shortcut them to put all the energy right away to the methanogenic archaea using that for the methane production. So. Um, so we came up with the hypothesis that this synthetic phenacine, since it's 
since this one acts as an electron donator and acceptor, can function as an electron mediator, and short circuits the electron flow directly to the methanogenic archaea. Um, what we found out, um, it's quite amazing. Um, so just concentrate on the black bars. On the left hand side, you can see our coal cultures. On the right hand side, the food waste cultures. We added phenacine. And on the black bars, if you eat, um, if you add phenacine at a certain concentration, the methane production increases like over 50 fold compared to the controlled, those are the white bars. So we can say that um, phenacine application does increase methane production. Um, we've also wanted to check out so, um, who are the microbes producing the methane, who are having the effect of the phenacine addi addition. And um, we could find out when you just concentrate um, within the circles in this um, red-lined square. So those circles are the relative abundances of methanogenic archaea that produce the methane. And phenacine had the effect that we could um, stimulate some methanogenic archaea. Um, here are some pictures of cocoid cells in green. Um, supposedly to be methano methanosacina. So at the end, we could say that we could stimulate uh, methanogenic archaea with the addition of phenacin. Um, but the archaea also need the bacteria, otherwise they can't survive because the bacteria are um, giving the archaea the food to eat. So um, we also had a look on the bacterial composition. First you read all over this. No, you just concentrate on the red bar and the uh, blue ones. So we actually could stimulate um, some bacteria really high, and others were just inhibited by the addition of red. We have to put more research in this area um, because um, it seems that phenacine favors the grow of some and just inhibits or is the dead for other bacteria. So um, to have this in your mind, um, to go home to have a picture about how it actually looks in the cultures. Um, those are pictures from my coal cultures and uh, orange needles, or it looks like needles, those are the phenacines and the green dots are bacteria and archaea. And mostly the bacteria and archaea are sitting or are aggregating around the orange needles and they form clusters, the needles as well. We also have the same phenomenon in the food waste cultures, um, but even more because we have a higher biomass. The biomass even increased higher with the addition of phenacine, and it forms a really big clump, like aggregate of biomass and needles, or not needles, um, phenacine needles. Um, so we wanted to know what is the phenacine and um, what can it do? So we found out that the uh, fantasy needles have a crystalline structure. They're actually really flexible. You can bind or they can like um, getting around, you know. Um, what you can do is actually you can see them in the cultures with your eye. You don't need a microscope. That means you can take your tweezers and just um, put them out of your culture and wash them in water or whatever. It has like the consistence, even if it's a crystal like your hair. It just looks red. Um, we also found out that the, um, that the phenacine needles are semiconductors. That means they can, they are able to transfer electrons. What is really important, um, since we are suggesting that those phenacine structures are taking up electrons and donating electrons to the archaea. And um, they are getting actually really long. And as you see here, mostly um, if you put phenacine into a culture, the biomass um, likes to attach to it or forms aggregates around it. And mostly um, all the other area is a kind of empty or no biomass. Um, a student from us um, just figured out, or not figured out, we kind of um, watch that the phenacine crystals are actually self-assembling. So if you put the phenacine in a culture, it's in solution. But after a while, if you go to the squares clockwise, um, you can just over hours see how the crystals, the phenacine crystals, develop and um, getting more and more and more 
over time. So they are actually um, really cost-effective self-assembling organic semiconductors. Um, what we want to do in future is actually we need to unravel um, the mechanisms of how it works, how can a bacterium um, donate electrons to the phenacene, how get the phenacene or get a methanogen that's producing methane, the electrons out of the phenacene. So we will work on this mechanism because nothing is known about that. And we also actually applied um, the phenacene into the field, into the 80 meter wells I showed in the beginning. And we could see that um, we also got, um, after a couple of hours, or not even an hour, they formed um, crystals in the coal mine water down at the well. And also after, I could say like after a few days, the biomass increased a lot. This is a picture of the beginning, it doesn't show the biomass increase. So actually the proje project presents a good opportunity um, to um, find out a mechanism to um, enhance biogas production since that is really critical in the moment. And um, maybe we are able to find out the mechanisms um, that manipulate the microbial communities um, to produce more biogas that we can use for our electricity or for fuel. Um, we found that out, or we are working together with the Wainwright Analytical Center as well as um, with the School of Material Science and Engineering. And um, a few owners and a postdoc is working on the same field with Mike. And um, why do my microbes see red? They see pretty much red because um, if you put the phenacines into the culture, um, they can't, they don't seem like having another way just to getting attached to it or attracted by it. So no microbe is an island <laughs> and no phenacine crystal is an island too. It all clusters into aggregates together. Yeah, and that's why my microbes are seeing red, but producing more biogas. Thanks.